Hello everyone and welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain. We're here continuing our Wednesday morning series of short conversations in English thanks to the help of the American Friends of the Prada Museum. The American Friends is a nonprofit organization and we're dedicated to supporting the museum with as many initiatives as we can, like these weekly conversations in English. And today we'll be looking at the death of Viriato by Jose de Madrazo, or Madrazo. This is a prime example of Spanish neoclassicism, and it takes an emblematic episode of history, of classical ancient history from the Iberian Peninsula, and then applies it very cleverly to, to Spanish modern politics. And before we even really get started, we should talk about who Jose de Madrazo is, uh, because he's such an important person in Spanish art history. He's probably the first person that we think of when we talk about neoclassicism in Spanish painting. And he is important not just for his production in painting, not just as a painter, but also for all of the roles that he filled. He was uh, the first court painter to Ferdinand VII. He was the director of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando. And he was also the director of the Prado. He was the director of this museum for nearly 20 years. And he also was the first of what would be a dynasty, really, a long line of painters. His children and his grandchildren would go on to be uh, in leading artistic figures and important painters as well. So the Madrasos really dominated the 19th century of painting in Spain. And the story that he depicts here brings us to the second century BC. Here we have the king of the Lusitanians who resisted the expansion of the Roman Empire in the Iberian Peninsula. And he was successfully resisting, and Rome finally conceded to recognize him as king of his people and to stop the fighting, but that wasn't the end of it, because a Roman counselor bribed some of Viriato's companions to kill him, which they did. And this is the scene that we're seeing here, that Viriato was killed in his sleep by traitors. And if we get close, we can see how they killed him here with a sword or a dagger to the neck. Now the center, the, the light falls right on, uh, right on Viriato's face, bringing our attention right here to the center of the action. We'll see that the center of the painting really is the part that is entirely bathed in light, and this is the way that the artist gets our eye to come to the center of the story, right? To call our attention to the most important part. And it's made even brighter by this choice of white sheets because this reflects the light so well, right? It stands out against the dark background and the other colors. And the center area here is framed on one side by the soldiers who are mourning his loss, who a servant as well. They're in grief, in shock, sad. Probably also thinking of what kind of fate awaits them, right, without the leadership of Viriato. And then as we move to the other side of the painting, we see a different reaction as other soldiers have decided to take up arms and go out to avenge the death of their leader. And we can even see one figure in the back. I don't know if we can see it because of the, the glare here, but there's a figure that's blowing a horn, which would be to call the troops to action. And Madrasso also made a lot of preparatory drawings for this painting, and we have one of the sketches here on display. Let's see if we have enough internet connection to go over and see this sketch, and if not, you can see all of this on our website as well. This and, and a lot more preparatory drawings. We can see some of the differences here. When we go back, you'll remember to see some of the differences like this structure here is a little bit different in the final version. In this part of the painting here where we can see the camp that's outside is also a little bit larger here than it will be in the final version. Madrasso painted this shortly after he arrived to Rome. Now, as a curiosity, it's interesting to know that actually when this was brought back on the ship in 1818 from Italy to Spain, that ship sank. And um, divers had to go down and retrieve what they could. And in one of the boxes, 
was the death of Viriato. When it got back to Madrid, uh, obviously it had a bit of water damage and Madrasso had to repaint parts of it. And then when he was director, he decided to hang the painting in the central gallery. Now some critics said that maybe uh, the expressions on some of the figures left a little bit to be desired, um, that they weren't quite as well executed as one might have hoped for, but that this central area really was remarkable for its sheen, its iridescence, for the quality of the fabrics, and the skin. Now we said that this is a neoclassicist painting, and, and what does that mean? Well, neoclassicism is of course characterized by a fascination and an idealization of the cultures of classical Greece and Rome. And in painting, it's recognizable for harmonic, well-balanced composition, restrained grandiosity, theatrical scenes that are very dramatic, but also very cold and stoic. And it, and it looks like these figures are kind of frozen in action, and their, their monumentality also reminds us of classical sculptures. Madrasa wanted to, this to be the first, of, the first great history painting that he painted, and he wanted it to have all of the grandiosity uh, that he came into contact with in Jacques-Louis David's workshop in Paris, and then later also with Jean-Auguste Dominique Ancre in Rome, where Madrasa would paint this death of Viriato. And not only are the individual figures influenced by classical sculpture, but the composition itself is also reminiscent of a frieze. We can think of friezes, right? These, these long horizontal bands of relief sculpture. And it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? In the way that the figures are all kind of on the same plane. There's not a lot of depth perspective. And the, the inclusion of this curtain that limits our view also amplifies that feeling. It keeps all of these figures on the same plane. Really, the only place where we get a little bit more of that perspective is when we look over to the side, when we see the camp that's on the other side of the curtain there. This painting is also typically neoclassical in the way that it depicts great heroes and its subjects, great heroes, historical figures with solemnity, that really even seems to transcend their personal stories, their circumstances, even their humanity. And then they're kind of transformed into these dignified representations of, of timeless virtues, ideals, values that we can learn from. Now, history painting had already been one of the most highly esteemed genres in painting, but in the 19th century, this would acquire even more relevance with the rise of uh, romanticism, with um, rising nationalist feelings, with the um, feelings of national identity, the uniqueness of national identities, and also the virtue of defending them. And this painting, this painting has a really powerful underlying patriotic sentiment. At the time it was painted, in 1807, the Napoleon's troops were already in Spain, and the war between Spain and France uh, was just about to begin. And so here we have the story of an Iberian king who was resisting Roman expansion and uh, protecting his people from foreign invasion. And at that time, when this was painted, the choice of Viriato was a very clear parallel for what was happening in Spain at the time. This painting has been interpreted as a glorification of the sacrifice made in the defense of independence and in resisting foreign invasion. And it's also worth noting that all of the paintings, we've talked about this a little bit in other videos, but all of the painting, a lot of the paintings in the 19th century collection have recently been rearranged here in the museum. So let's have a look at the room that we're standing in now because this is a little bit different. If you went to go see this painting just a few months ago or a year ago, it would have been in a very different place. And now it's here uh, with, with the, the paintings by Goya, the 2nd and the 3rd of May, which while aesthetically is quite different, it really highlights these shared themes, right, of resistance and independence. Well, I hope that you have had 
Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed um, having a closer look at the death of Viriato, this prime example of Spanish neoclassicism, and hearing a little bit more about Jose de Madrazo. You can find out more about Madrazo, more about this painting uh, at, on our website, and you can also see a lot more of those images of the preparatory drawings and sketches. So thank you for joining, and we'll see you again next Wednesday for more Conversations in English.